onto the cloud. So I'm so pleased you've made it this evening and I'm not just talking to myself. <laughs> and uh, welcome. Um, if you can't see my name on the screen because you're looking on a teeny tiny phone, um, I'm Emma Skilton and I am part of, a, well, one of the mentors on the boot camp and I've been filming the exercises that you can join into and do during the 30 days. But also I've been um, basically using Niels Yard Remedies products for many, many, many years, since I was a teenager, in fact. Um, and then for the last eight years, once I realized I could actually sell the products as well, then I started selling them direct. And I have uh, lots of customers and actually, you know, and other people doing the same as me that I look after. But um, Jackie kind of kind of um, got onto the fact that they're organic and we've all been spending the last 30 days really investing time and money um, on amazing Purify Gut Reset Program products and eating really healthily. But actually, it's just as important what you put on your skin as well. So what I wanted to do this evening was just introduce you. Obviously, Neil's Old Remedies is the brand that I love and I promote, but there are other organic brands out there. So you're not, you know, but in my mind, they were the first and they are the best at what they do. So it's a really lovely opportunity to be able to just explain to you why organic, why would you even think about organic skincare? We, we think a lot about the food we eat. We know we're probably very familiar with organic food. The Soil Association certifies that. They're very strict about the way the food is grown, but actually they're equally strict about the way the plants are grown that we then use as the ingredients in the products. So um, first of all, I guess the main thing is, you know, it's better for us and it's better for the planet because if we're using less pesticides, then that is um, going to be better for our ecosystem. And it means that we're not getting so much of the toxins through our skin because our skin is the biggest organ and it's better for the wildlife as well. So we've, we've um, seen in a lot of farms now where farmers are being encouraged to let the hedgerows go wild and not spray because you want that biodiversity for the bees and the birds and all the insects that we actually need to um, keep our ecosystem working effectively. So organic is actually, it has to be approved. As I mentioned in this country, it's the UK as a soil association, um, but Niels Yard Remedy is sourced globally. So they have an amazing uh, relationships with organizations, usually women's groups actually, little cooperatives around the world that are producing ingredients and sometimes also producing essential oils from those ingredients that Niels Yard needs in their products. And so that compliance is really, really important. Mm -hmm. So the other thing is that if something is naturally occurring, so clay, uh, something that's wild grown, so frankincense, in fact, has been in the desert for thousands and thousands of years and frankincense is one of the ingredients that we're very well known for. Um, until very recently, because we've started actually doing our own seedlings and, and planting, um, you couldn't certify frankincense as organic. It has, it's wild grown, it's always been there. So some people will say, oh, on, on the, that product, it's not, it can't be all organic because it only says it's 80% organic, for example. But water is naturally occurring, so you can't certify water. Clay is naturally occurring. And as I say, if it's wild grown, um, then what, what we would do there, um, so for example, dandelion, elderflower, those just, you'll find those around walking. Um, mm -hmm. But again, where we work with uh, organizations around the world, then we have another certification to make sure that when it's wild grown, that it's not over harvested. So for example, with frankincense, if you take too much from the tree, you will kill the tree. So the way the frankincense is harvested, they take from the bark, they kind of um, cut into the bark and then the sap comes out and then it sets and they snap it off. So it's actually a resin, so it's a tree resin. Yeah. So it's really important that 
everything is done sustainably right from the beginning and to the point of where it ends up in one of these lovely blue bottles. Um, so that's something that the company is really, really passionate about. And natural, obviously, is ingredients or ex extracts from standard conventional farming, but still um, avoiding synthetic fertilizers and preservatives and everything like that. So the thing is, in this country and actually around the world, and this is why it's so difficult for the consumer, that there's no real legislation around um, regulating the organic beauty market. So any producer can claim that a product's organic, regardless of the amount of organic it actually contains. So for example, if something had maybe a nice organic essential oil in it, but then the base was um, say Vaseline, which is petrochemical base, they might still imply, well, it's a lovely organic product because it's got the organic essential oil, but actually the base that it's in isn't very good for you at all. And that's where it's a real minefield. And there's a lot of um, groups out there actually really trying to put pressure on the powers that be to say, we need to be clearer. It's not fair on the consumer. We need to be much more clear about what the ingredients are how they're derived, and then the consumer has a, um, a better, easier way of choosing. Um, and that was something I found early on, was I'm very allergic to perfumes and synthetic preservatives, and I was getting blisters on my hands. Mm -hmm. And I tried so many natural products, and they weren't working, and I wasn't getting better. And it was only much later that I realized that it's the parfum that was in these so-called natural products that I was reacting to. So it was like, I had to be like a detective to work out over time what it was that I was reacting to. So I have a lot of people that come to me with skin conditions and I always think, what are you using now? You need to clear all the chemicals out of your house. And then we will start from scratch with something very, very simple. Um, and then as your skin starts to heal, then you can usually start to introduce some nice fragrances as long as they're pure, natural, preferably essential oils. So if you're watching this and you have skin conditions, you can always find me and message me and I can hopefully help you find some solutions. So, um, yes, yeah, so the, that's really very basically why you would want to choose organic better for us, better for the planet and you're not using all those pesticides and toxic um, chemicals. So when you think of um, a lot of products, historically, when I was growing up, Vaseline, um, a lot of those emollients are all petrol-based. So personally, I don't wanna put petrol on my skin. I'd much rather use a cocoa butter or a coconut oil, or um, basically something derived from a natural source and they've got antioxidants in them, they've got active ingredients that work with the skin. And you will notice if you use those sort of products that your skin will love you for it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I'd, I don't wanna to spend too much time really sort of going over and over and over that part of it, but I would want to really, while we're here, is just tell you some of the things that you want to um, avoid. So, mm -hmm. Maybe. This is a great, I'm going to hold this up to the camera, but this is the most amazing um, poster that was done. <laughs> and on there, it highlights how many different products most people use in a day. So okay. if they're using, um, say, um, deodorants, body lotions, makeup's the worst, actually, lipsticks, nail varnish, perfume, fake tan. <laughs> Uh, shampoo, all that, they're all full of um, sodium lauryl sulfate, which is one that got um, a lot of publicity. It's a foaming agent. Um, a lot of companies have stopped using that now, but it's a skin irritant. And um, sorry, Emma, what was that called? Laurel. Sodium lauryl sulfate. Okay, thank sodium. you. Sodium lauryl sulfate. And I could actually type that, but I don't know with the recording whether whether the chat comes up. So I can, if anyone wants to know afterwards, I can send out 
um, a little sheet with, with a list of the main ingredients to avoid. Parabens, parabens are the worst. So ethyl paraben, methyl paraben, propyl paraben causes rash, irritant, hormonal disruption. So anyone with anything going on with their hormones really needs to avoid parabens. So parabens are used as preservatives and parabens happen naturally in nature. So blueberries have parabens in, they're naturally preserving, but synthetic parabens are different. So uh, naturally occurring parabens are water soluble. So your body disperses with any excess, but synthetic parabens are not water soluble. So they are fat soluble. What that does is when they absorb into the body, the body doesn't know what to do with it. And so they accumulate in fatty tissue. So typically with women, it will be breasts, hips, and um, very worryingly, anyone who has had uh, breast cancer, they generally find that in the tumor, there are parabens. Oh. So oh. they can't say that parabens cause cancer, Mm. But when they take tumors out, more often than not, they are containing parabens. Mm. So I don't want those accumulating in my body. Thank you very much. And anyone who's had um, cancer will be told to avoid parabens. Mm. But it seems a bit late then. I think you'd want to be really avoiding them now. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So again, some companies now are getting on to the idea that these aren't good and they are taking them out of their products. Mm -hmm. Others won't because they're cheap. They preserve the product for a long time. So that gives the product a really long shelf life. And because the beauty industry is self-regulating, they very often won't make the change until they're forced. So either consumer pressure mm -hmm. or government pressure. Um, so those are the two really... The parabens and the sodium laurel sulfate are the two that most people probably be aware of. Um, the ones that you're probably less aware of are synthetic perfumes. So again, they can cause irritants, um, nausea. Again, they can be hormone disrupting because with perfume, the companies don't actually need to tell you what's in it. So any synthetic fragrance, synthetic colorings, um, mineral oils, so they're all things that really you don't want in your products, ideally. So um, there's, a, there's a quite long list. And if you want to explore a little website, which is actually aimed at um, mums and toddlers, but they have the most amazing toxins in our toiletries list on their website. And I found this. <laughs> When I first started with Neil's Yard Remedies, because people kept asking me about the different ingredients. So there's a, a website called Little Acorns to Mighty Oaks. Oh, and if you go on there, yeah, yeah, yeah. there is a list called Toxins in Our Toiletries, and it explains all the different toxins, um, what they do, why you want to avoid them. Triplosan was the one that did me. <clears throat> and that, excuse me, <clears throat> that is the antibacterial, antimicrobial, it's in all the synthetic um, antibacterial soaps, it's lethal. Um, and I would imagine with our current situation where we're hand washing when using hand sanitizers all the time, there's yeah. a lot of people really struggling with their hands. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's true. Nails the art to the rescue. <laughs> Organic <laughs> hand sanitizer. So... <laughs> The most important thing in a um, antibacterial is it is 70% alcohol. That's the most important bit in it. In here, the other things are witch hazel and essential oils. Mm -hmm. If you buy a really cheap hand sanitizer, chances are it's got triclosan and other really nasties in that will really dry out your hands and potentially cause irritants. So use it. It's yes, this do just spray. So there's little ones that you can spray. Uh, we've got some that you just sort of dab. And it's got the most beautiful um, smell, actually. It's Nioli and lemongrass. So I, I love it. I find it really uplifting. And some people use it almost like a refreshing spray. So there's my little plug for our <laughs> sanitizer. Um, 
so yes that's a really useful little website and um one of the things about i was mentioning about preservatives how do we if we're not using parabens how are we preserving organic products and this mm -hmm. wouldn't just be mills yard there'll be other companies out there that will be doing a similar thing so the main thing for us is the blue glass so these blue bottles are quite iconic um, but they have a really good purpose so that blue glass cuts out the uv so it preserves the product the worst place to put your lovely bottles is on the window ledge oh. keep them in a cool dark place and they will last you a lot lot longer um, so vitamin e that's and vitamin C, they are really good preservatives. Mm -hmm. And um, so, and the dealkalized, so I can't even say that very well, but there's a small amount of denatured alcohol because you need that to disperse the essential oils. They're from plant sources and they're usually from rye. Um, so everything that they're using is plant-based and um, from a pure, pure source. Mm -hmm. um so it's um hopefully that's given you a little little start of an insight into mm -hmm. thinking about what you're using maybe looking in the cupboard at what you've got at home already and starting to be a bit of a detective on some of those ingredients um i've mentioned essential oils so the essential oils are a really important part um for Niels yard because they're all the products are based around plants and essential oils and the thing that i find really wonderful about essential oils is that because of our sense of smell it's so powerful and we will respond it, it affects the limbic part of the brain so we will have an emotional response when we smell something and it can evoke memories good and bad so sometimes you might smell and lavender's like the Marmite one for me. People either love it or they hate it. Mm -hmm. Very often it's because when they smell that lavender, it takes them back to a memory. Mm -hmm. So either a really lovely memory or a not so lovely memory. And that will work with lots of different smells. And they really can um, trigger very powerful emotions and reactions. And at the same time, that's why they're so brilliant for relaxation, helping with sleep. You'll notice here in the background, I've got diffuser going. I don't know if you can see that puffing away. Yeah. So the beauty of that is you can choose an oil depending on the mood. Mm -hmm. um, so in the evening, a calming or the calming blend to put you in a nice space of relaxation before you go to sleep. Maybe if you're working, you need to really concentrate. You can find something that's quite sort of uplifting and, and gives vitality um, or you might need something for energy so essential oils really work on such a deep level in our psyche I just think they're absolutely amazing and um, of course if you're mixing them with an emollient and you're putting them on your skin then you're getting the benefit of the oils through the skin as well so all the all these um, bottles that I'm sort of bringing into the forefront are all ready mixed mm. in a vegetable base with um, wonderful essential oils. And um, when you think about what is an essential oil, think about um, it's extracted from flowers, leaves, bark, roots, even berries. Um, so if you, if you imagine when you peel an orange or um, at Christmas, it's Christmas, isn't it? Mandarin, yeah. when you peel that skin, it's zesty, the aroma comes out of that orange and or you know you're standing under a, a jasmine bush or, or a beautiful rose it's that essence that when the oils are distilled or extracted that's what we're taking from the plant and then using in the products and they will have different qualities um, that also can benefit physical ailments as well as promoting you know well-being so anyone who's a trained aromatherapist We'll have clients going to them with very specific um, needs and they will use the essential oils to help alleviate. So, yeah, they're absolutely amazing. Um, so, yeah, so in, in, in this situation, obviously essential oils, they're, they're active ingredients and you're getting that benefit through the skin. And again, without the um, 
sort of harmful chemicals and, and pesticides. So all the essential oils, they are the purest that you can get. So when you're using them again, you're not putting anything into your skin, absorbing through the skin that you don't really want there. So do you have any questions so far? Because I feel like I've talked quite a lot already. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Yes, we, we, uh, if you can set, also let us know the things we shouldn't be used, you know, the, the uh, like things to avoid, to avoid things to avoid. Yes. Well, one of the easy things there is if I hold up, I've got a little line in here under this screen that you can't see. I've raided my house. <laughs> for all the things I use. So I thought that's probably quite a good example. So, for example, deodorant. So the big thing we want to avoid in deodorant is um, aluminium. Aluminium. Yes. So especially if it's an antiperspirant, you don't really want antiperspirants because they're designed to stop you sweating. But naturally, we need to sweat. Mm. But the aluminium um, has been linked to breast cancer. Yes. Oh. And um, again, um, aluminium, it's a little bit debatable, but is it linked to Alzheimer's? Is it not? Don't know. But again, you know, you're, what you're absorbing in your body travels around the body. Um, also, with deodorants, if you get itchy skin, it's likely it's the perfume, so parfum. Oh, right. Again, try and get something without parfum, and you're less likely to get itchy in your armpits. If that, that's something I just can't base, I'm, I'm really pleased that I can use this because <laughs> I no. can't use any others. I use um, a block. Yes, myself. Sorry, I use a block with yes. without the aluminium. Um, yes. I don't know if that was, I don't know if that's safe to continue with, to be quite If honest. it's not irritating you no. and, and it works, then yeah, it's fine. It, the, the main thing in deodorants you want to avoid is the aluminium. Hmm. And then if you have um, allergies, it's the parfum is yes. the one to, because it could be anything. You don't know what it is. They don't tell you. Yeah. Um, so the next one, shampoo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get an itchy head when you wash your hair it's very likely it's something in the shampoo so again it could be um, the perfumes they often put uh, silicon which coats the hair oh. but it doesn't break down we don't really want silicon on our body or on our hair hmm. um, again parabens so parabens would be and the um one I mentioned at the beginning, the sodium laurel sulfate is what makes things foam. The foamer mm. is really bad for your skin. All oh, right, the first one you yeah. 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 So you really want to have um, a plant-based conditioner as well. So, okay. so yes. there are other brands doing organic. Just be aware of a very well-known brand that calls itself organic uh, yeah. I don't think it's seen anything organic in its life <laughs> right, okay. so, yeah it's um that's where we say the greenwashing comes in where it's good to learn your labels yeah so the other one of course is soap yeah yes. so don't wash your face with soap so bad for you um but there's been a lot of uh publicity around palm oil mm. and the destruction to the environment for the orangutans, palm oil plants destroying Asia because nothing else can grow where palm oil grows. Mm. Um, so we used to use organic, certified organic palm oil, but Neil's Old Remedies decided that actually even that can't guarantee it. It need to find another solution. And actually palm oil is in everything, absolutely everything. But we do have a palm oil free soap. So again, when you're thinking about your products, how they're produced is yeah. something else that you might be considering. So that one is coconut based and share nut butter and again, essential oils. So mm -hmm. even soap, if you're sensitive, take the soaps without parfum. Uh, a lot of people say to me, oh, I use simple. The only thing about simple is that it doesn't have perfume in. So some people use simple and they still react. It's because the base that it's made with is not natural. Uh, 
so that's again where it's such a minefield um shower gel <laughs> so you can see i've gone around the house smiling everything so shower gels again if you're using a, a shower gel that's full of chemicals that's all going down the plug hole into the river for our poor, poor little fish so you know and you're putting that on your skin Mm -hmm. it's the biggest organ in your body you'll be absorbing so again thinking about what you're using in the shower you might prefer soap you might prefer shower gel but again people say to me oh I've got this strange you know rash on my back and I'm thinking well what are you washing your hair in because that's going to run down oh, yeah. while you're in the shower what are you using on your body in the shower so you know you, you, you sort of when you start to unravel it often these things are easy to resolve when we get rid of chemicals. Okay. Mm. Um, I mentioned the hand spray. There's a there's a whole range of um, hand washes and hand lotions to protect the hands. And again, you know, it was the antibacterial soaps that absolutely ruined my skin all those years ago. And I've never touched them. Every time I see them, I'm like, hey, get them away, evil, evil. <laughs> Um, so yeah, hand washes with essential oils. And actually, an amazing thing with essential oils is they are naturally antibacterial, naturally antifungal, mm -hmm. some of them are even antiviral. Yes. So the power of nature, it's all there. And that's the thing is that it's all there for us. That's why they're a herbalist, why they're people making these amazing products. But because the synthetic versions often are very cheap, give a long shelf life, you can see the attraction for the manufacturers, but does that really benefit us? Does it really benefit the planet? Mm -hmm. um, so the other thing is room sprays. So plug-in glade plug-ins, oh. breeze, all those. If you've got any kind of breathing conditions, asthma, uh, stay well away. They're full of really toxic chemicals. If you really want a lovely spray, then use one which is based with essential oils because again, they will kill the bacteria in the, in the environment rather than just masking it. Or have a diffuser with a, an oil in that will naturally be antibacterial in the room. So the, you, you can um, learn loads about the um, essential oils on the website. I put the link actually in the chat today that would just take you straight through to the website and you can explore all, all sorts of things on there. Yeah, um, yeah. And the other thing that I really like, um, particularly about this brand, and I've noticed other brands are starting to do that again, and Synergy actually are really good for it, that they put the full ingredients on the website so you know exactly what you're getting. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of companies will just put the key ingredients and they're the nice bit. Yes, and it's not until you've bought the product and then you see the rest and you're like oh I didn't actually want that but I couldn't tell when I was online or it's so tiny tiny writing you can't actually read it anyway <laughs> do you do candles at all? yes That's yes right. and actually I'm glad you mentioned candles because cheapy cheap candles are paraffin wax based I which again is toxic yeah. So you really want to have a soya base or a beeswax base mm -hmm. um, candle so that when you burn it, you're not putting toxins into your house again. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. So there's a lot more awareness generally now about that because there's been documentaries about toxins in the house. So house cleaning products, you know, they always say don't use two products in the loo because they mix together. They can be toxic. Well, actually, when you think about it, you're putting all these different chemicals on your skin. We don't really understand the synergistic effect of them all together accumulating because they're only ever tested individually. Yes, quite. So they'll say, oh, well, that's safe because, you know, it's such a tiny bit. But if like the parabens, it's a tiny bit, but it accumulates over time and then it's interacting with synthetic perfumes, which are accumulating over time. We don't really know the long term effects on our body of that build up. But I would say that anyone who's really working on thinking about what they're putting on their, in their body and they've been aware of that toxic load, which when we do the, the boot camp for 30 days or the 21 days, 
that intense phase, we are trying to get our body to get rid of the excess toxins, get rid of that toxic load. And then once we've done that immediately, we start to feel better. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that if you've got lots of synthetic chemicals in the house, they will have an effect on your health over time. Maybe not immediately, unless you have an instant reaction, but over time, you know, we, we just try and best to try and avoid as much as possible. Oh, that, that, is, that is interesting. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, indeed. So mm. can I answer any other questions for you? Oh, is there anything you want to talk about? Well, obviously, there's all the products you put on your skin, but I was wondering about, um, I mean, it's difficult. Uh, I'm a person who colours my hair, for example. So I kind of like stuck. <laughs> that is a tricky one. Um, I take my own shampoo to the hairdresser because I'm so allergic to their products. Okay. And I'm, very, I'm very lucky because this is my natural colour. Um, yeah. If I had needed to dye my hair or wanted to dye my hair, um, I'm not sure what I would do. But there are more um, natural, less toxic hair products around now than there used to be. Um, I don't know how effective they are. But generally, yes, uh, the hair dyes are not great because you're absorbing it through the scalp. Mm. And again, if you have uh, sensitive skin, the chances are it is going to irritate your scalp. Mm. I'm a hair colorer. Mum's natural. Yes, I don't have to. She's never colored her hair once. <laughs> Fantastic. It's yeah. lucky. Oh, natural. A <laughs> yes, a it's bit just of a mixture. <laughs> I think yeah, yeah. There's, there's a balance, isn't it? We always have to make that decision of what we're happy with and what we would prefer to make changes. Mm. And, you know, I think I've, I've done this for a long time and some people come and they're really anxious and they go home and they're practically chucking everything out of the house going, oh my gosh, I mustn't use this and I mustn't use that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I would say is finish using it. You know, you've paid money for it. But yeah. then maybe consider when you replace that product, what might you use instead that would be kinder to you and kinder to the environment. Mm. Okay. And we're becoming much more aware of the impact of the environment on how we produce things, what we use, what happens to them afterwards. So, you know, are they recyclable um, packaging that they come in, all that kind of thing. Um, and again, you know, globally, there's a lot more legislation where companies have to make products with packaging that can be recycled or less packaging. So where things have been over packaged. So there's certainly a lot more awareness now than a few years ago, even. Mm. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I, yeah, I believe, Emma, you're also um, a flag bearer for cleaning products. Well, I, I tend to use um, microfiber cloths and water as much as possible. But in fact, our organic defense hand spray is the most amazing cleaning product of all. Okay. <laughs> so I spray that on the cloth and just wipe everything with it. And you can even get the um, organic defense blend as a pure essential oil. And then I, I've got a little mini spray bottle even just, you know, once that's finished, just keep keep the spray bottle. And then I put water in, the essential oils. It smells lovely. And I just, you know, clean it all with that. Okay. White vinegar, white vinegar is great. Yeah. Like carbonate soda, all those sorts of natural things. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Mm. Yeah, well, lovely. the power of essential oils is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm just thinking, because I don't want to keep you here for too long, because as I said, I'm quite a chatterbox and I could probably chat all night. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, that's good with your job to be able to, to talk, mum, isn't it? Mum did recognise a diffuser because she's seen one. Oh, yes, you, you've used one at the yeah. same time, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, they're brilliant. I, that one has got too much bright light on it, but that's a colour changing one, which is yeah, my yeah. best selling one. It's very popular with mums with yeah. teenagers, but... They don't want them having joysticks in the bedroom in case they set fire to the house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so they get them the 
the diffuser instead. And um, the beauty of it is, of course, you can change the smell depending on the mood. Yeah. So you have a whole collection of lovely oils and do your own little blends and everything. So it's quite fun. Um, if we want to order something, um, can we do that with you at the moment? Yeah, the best thing, if you look in the chat box, in the chat box. Um, I have shared a link, especially for today. Yeah. Um, and also I shared it in our Facebook group. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's live today until 11 p.m. Okay. So and that will guarantee Christmas delivery. So from... So that's why it's only live till 11 p.m. tonight. If you want to order past today, then um, I can send you the link to my web shop um, separately and you can have a look if you'd like to. Yeah, but you can, you can order any time. Obviously, at the moment, it's because I've got a little Christmas tree and the Christmas gifts in the background as props. There's lots of people buying, <laughs> buying gifts for themselves. Um, but any time of the year, you can order direct through the website or, or you can come to me. In fact, um, one of the things I really like doing, it was so nice that Jackie invited me today, was that I very often, if we'd had more time and we could arrange this, um, I would get a group together in advance or you could have all your friends together. And then I would send out samples. So we might decide we're going to do a hand treatment, for example. So I'd send out little samples and then we together would go through a little workshop online and try the products together. Because yeah. it's a very touchy feeling. It's very difficult if you can't actually try the products to really get a feel for how lovely they are and actually whether you like them. Because as I said, the essential oils are so personal. What one person likes, another person might go, oh no, I don't like that one, but I do like this one. Mm. Yeah. So sure. yeah, it's nice to be able to have a chance to, to try things, definitely. Wonderful. Mm. Well, keep that in mind. Keep, yes. A future reference. Yes. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. So I hope that's been helpful. Yes. yes. Um, Indeed. A little insight into um, organic. And again, in the UK, if you want to guarantee organic, then you look for the Soil Association certification. Um, and actually, if I very, very quickly, if I can make this work share my screen <laughs> i set it up in advance and you can then see oh this is my website but you can see where the about us is you can see more about the ingredients the packaging so how um everything's packaged how to recycle it yeah um this i love doing good we do good so you can feel good and look good naturally but as you scroll down it just reminds you of what you won't find in an organic product yeah. and um, particularly Neil's Yard Remedies have the ethos if in doubt leave it out mm. okay. which I think is really good and again you know really campaigning companies so trying to save the forest they were integral in banning microbeads wow. from the ocean so that was one of their campaigns so mm. never use microbeads in the product save the bee campaigns yeah. Um, yeah. so again you know really understand the importance of bees and other pollinators but bumblebees are the ones that really are so endangered mm. and there we go there's the soil association logo there so yeah. Oh, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on that website, you can click through to the Soil Association and you can find out more about the work they do if that interests you. So, yeah, there's masses and masses of information on there. Thank you. So, there we go. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay, yes. it's been, it's been nice a treat. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> yes, thank you. That's brilliant. And, um, Oh, look, there's Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's <laughs> gone. <laughs>